and welcome to the debate. I'm your Shafi Iqbal and in today's episode we'll be talking about the government's stance on terrorism and uh, in the second segment we'll be talking about propaganda against Pakistan and IMF talks. In the first segment if we talk about the government's stance on terrorism, the backdrop of it being on the night of uh, 25th and 26th of August, uh, the terrorists attempted to launch multiple attacks in different parts of Balochistan. But the effective response from their own troops, the security forces, the armed forces of the country, foiled their evil designs. And the attacks were condemned subsequently by the Prime Minister, Shehba Sharif, the President, Asif Ali Zardari, the Interior Minister, Mehsi Nakvi, and the Chief Minister, Balochistan, along with all the political leadership of the country. And um, in regards to the terror attacks, the surge that has been uh, witnessed recently, they come as uh, all the economic indicators have started uh, showing a positive trajectory, the uh, efforts for economic revival underway, and uh, so, much, uh, so much efforts being put in by the government uh, for economic revival of the country in regards to the foreign direct investment, in regards to the talks with the IMF and of course uh, creating a policy and conducive environment for business but these uh, surge in the terror attacks that the country has witnessed recently is of course uh, ruining that atmosphere of uh, peace and investment in the country and of course uh, today addressing uh, the federal cabinet meeting uh, about uh, talking about uh, the terror issue in the country the prime minister emphasized on the complete eradication of terrorism and he categorically stated that there are, is uh, no room for terrorists in the country in regards to that uh, Mohsin Nakvi the interior minister of the country also visited Balochistan today and the prime minister is uh, to visit Balochistan soon as he ruled out a soft approach or any talks with the terrorists in regards to that, an operation uh, was conducted in uh, Tira Valley today of the Khyber district in which uh, 25 Fitnal Khwarij were dispatched to hell and um, it was and uh, is a very successful operation by the armed forces of the country and a grand operation, intelligence-based operation by the armed forces in Tira today where 25 terrorists were neutralized. Regarding uh, the second segment, we'll be talking about uh, the propaganda b against Pakistan and IMF talks as um, Islamabad seeks uh, an extended fund facility from the IMF and in regards to that, the talks have also been underway and uh, it is subject to the executive committee of the IMF at the moment, uh, but there's also a propaganda as we're living in an era of misinformation. Uh, there are um, propagandas going on against Pakistan and IMF talks and we'll be talking about the different dimensions of both these uh, topics today. In the studios, we've been joined by senior analyst Farouk Fadafi. Along with that, we've been joined by geopolitical analyst Raja Faisal. And on Skype, we've been joined by Brigadier Retired Avakar Khan, who is a senior analyst as well. Thank you all for being part of the conversation and uh, joining us on the debate. I'll start off uh, with Brigadier Vakar and ask him um, as uh, regards to the recent wave of terrorism that the country has witnessed and of course uh, the subsequent developments that we've seen, the government's stance on terrorism as Prime Minister stated in the cabinet meeting today, how do you comment on it overall and uh, how do you think, uh, how do you comment on the Prime Minister's statement of uh, no soft approach for the terrorists anymore? Mute yourself. Brigadier Bakar, we, we, we are trouble having uh, to hear you if you can unmute yourself. Brigadier Bakar, am I audible to you? Well, we'll try reconnecting with him uh, till then. Uh, Raja Faisal, I'd like your comment on the security situation as well as the Prime Minister. In uh, today's cabinet meeting, he stated that no soft approach for the terrorists anymore. How do you comment on that? Yeah, of course, uh, obviously, but Rafi, when you talk about Pakistan's stance, and of course, Prime Minister's stance is very clear, and that is that if there are outfits or individuals or within the outfits who are willing to talk to uh, the federal government or the provincial government, uh, then they can, they can come forward and they can lay the arms and they can uh, be, uh, of course, part of... Uh, uh, Pakistan. But when it comes to uh, the terrorist, I mean, there is uh, no soft approach for uh, the terrorist. If there are terrorists, then terrorists will be countered with a brute force. 
uh, which will be applied in reaction of whatever has happened uh, to uh, uh, you know uh, to Balochistan a couple of days ago, and uh, uh, that approach uh, is has always been there and is still there. But uh, there is a reiterating fact about it that uh, the uh, uh, the doors for negotiations or talks with those who consider uh, that they have to talk and they are ready for talking and they are ready to lay the arms then of course the doors are open because the peaceful negotiation and peaceful resolve is the uh, is the way forward but at the same time uh, anyone who will be challenging the writ of the government or will be challenging the constitution of pakistan will be taken to task and the pakistan security forces pakistan's uh, intelligence services all of them they are uh, always ready to of course uh, counter them and i uh, i think uh, this uh, uh, statement coming from uh, uh, prime minister uh, at this hour it was uh, very important mm. and at the same time he has highlighted the fitna khwarij as well uh, who are sitting across the border and uh, they are conducting their activities in pakistan from across the border and of course mm. they are uh, trying to disrupt peace as well as pakistan's economic endeavors uh, including cpac and uh, they are, uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, getting countered by Pakistan, and that uh, uh, that war on fitna al Khwarij will be continued, and uh, there will no, there will not be any stop. But if amongst them if there are people who want to, of course, sit uh, and negotiate peace, then. Peace can be negotiated, but not on their terms, of course, Pakistan's terms. And first of all, of course, they have to uh, recognize uh, Pakistan's constitution and accept Pakistan constitution. Mm. It would not be allowed to anyone to, of course, challenge the writ and challenge uh, the constitution of Pakistan. And at the same time, uh, uh, Prime Minister hailed the uh, role of the security forces and role of uh, intelligence services as well, and uh, he recognized the, uh, the sacrifices that has been laid by of course the security forces and people mm. at large as well pakistan people of pakistan they have uh, done so and uh, uh, along with that of course the prime minister is going to uh, balochistan in uh, two or three days time and of course he will further uh, look into uh, how to of course uh, uh, manage and counter uh, the sort of uh, uh, terrorist activities which were uh, uh, carried out very recently there mm -hmm. and uh, this was the whole scenario and uh, i think uh, this uh, statement was a uh, much needed one uh, which was uh, uh, which came at the right time mm -hmm. Well, I would also like to include the Brigadier Vakar in the conversation as um, how do you comment on the situation and uh, the Prime Minister saying that uh, no soft approach for the terrorists and their complete elimination. Do you think the cross-border movement should also uh, be monitored more severely as uh, there was a recent incident where the own troops, they eliminated uh, terrorists as they were trying to cross the border from Afghanistan into Pakistan as well. So do you think a more a security at uh, the borders as well and a stricter approach for those who are trying to cross the borders? Yeah, I think uh, as far as, uh, as Mr. Kam is concerned, it based on the policy or the strategy. And it's very, very clear. There is a kinetic arm uh, which is going to work uh, through intelligence-based operation, uh, maybe large-scale intelligence operation uh, within Pakistan. And in case there be need, you know, we can definitely go across uh, if the intelligence is there. And then I think 90% uh, is in the non kinetic domain. This is the political ownership uh, by uh, political parties, uh, chief ministers, bureaucracy, uh, and the federal government. And if you look at uh, announcement of Azmi Stekam, there were a lot of, I think, controversy created uh, in one of the provinces, knowing fully well that military, frontier corps, police, uh, you know, other law enforcement agency intelligence is actually fighting for Pakistan and for us and for our next generation. Uh, so it was just point scoring because there are vote banks in Balochistan and in KP uh, where some political parties do get benefit the illegal vote of some of the Afghans uh, which are uh, which have been maybe issued fake ID card. Uh, the other is definitely uh, is, uh, Pakistan Afghanistan has become a mafia corridor and there's a crackdown on that. So uh, DISPR already mentioned uh, of the illegal spectrum uh, which includes a lot of uh, you know areas of smuggling, dollar, uh, fuel, uh, P.O.L. Uh, then you have drugs and weapon system, and then definitely that's where the terrorists uh, do get funding also. Uh, and then, of course, one prong is uh, diplomatic, aggressively pursue uh, to one, of course, uh, tell uh, 
the regime in Kabul that uh, they have to behave like a state and uh, in case they want to get integrated and uh, carry the region, Iran, uh, you know, Central Asian Republic, Russia, China, our friends, and then of course, uh, even Middle Eastern countries to pressurize. Uh, and then of course, there are certain economic measures that Pakistan can take. So this was the overall uh, concept. Uh, now, I think one, uh, in Balochistan, again, uh, definitely there was an environment created in the last three or four months, especially if you look at uh, a lady, uh, which is basically, uh, you know, using the Bloch name and uh, it's a disgrace to a uh, Bloch cause. Basically, she was basically sheltering the terrorists, moving around in form of protest, uh, and even tried to incite violence uh, with the military in Gawadar. So uh, now things are exposed. Uh, she was actually uh, also supported by some of the NGOs from Norway, she just visited there. And then if you look at the information domain, uh, and there's a war that Pakistani media is fighting, or Pakistani patriots, and then there are, you know, fifth columnists within Pakistan, India, and some host agencies are trying to basically exploit the situation. If you look at Indian media, they were jubilant uh, at the loss of life here. Uh, this has been their normal, I think, um, uh, level. So, so all this is the challenge that I think we are facing, but I think if you listen to uh, the press conference by Chief Minister Bloistan yesterday and then whatever was said by Prime Minister. Things are very clear that there will be no uh, tolerance. Yes, people who surrender, uh, like Uzar Imam Shambay or uh, uh, Safaz Bangalzi to the state, mm. uh, and in case there are no heinous uh, let's say, charges against them, maybe they can be accommodated. But otherwise, anyone who is trying to put a gun on our uh, you know, forehead and ask for uh, some concession, these will not be given. Pakistan military law enforcement will inshallah fight it out. And I, I feel that this is going to be a decisive battle. Today we have seen the demonstration in uh, Pira Valley, uh, where I think uh, more than a dozen were sent to hell. So this is, and they are on the run. That's why they are engaging soft targets. Hmm, definitely. Prof. to, um, I'd also like your comment, uh, because um, when we were talking about terrorism yesterday, specifically in context of uh, the region at large, you said uh, the, uh, the root of the issue needs to be addressed. And the root goes back to a country having their, um, having their nefarious hegemonic designs that they want to uh, instill in the region. Uh, how do you think a regional co coordinated approach could be taken against the issue of terrorism and uh, instability emanating from terrorism that um, is being pursued by certain quarters and stakeholders in the region but are ruining peace and stability for the others? Right. Uh, thank you very much, Rafi. Uh, by hegemonic designs, I, I believe that you are referring to defensive offense of India, yeah. right? Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about that uh, a bit later. Let me first of all uh, focus on certain uh, ideas or issues that keep on uh, propping up. And the biggest problem is that even our vocabulary needs fixing. Mm. For example, I, I, you know, I'm ethnic Baloch, right? Mm. Uh, but uh, we have repeatedly had Baloch cause, Baloch cause. I don't understand what caused that for because uh, Baloch, B Baloch people are scattered in various countries, right? Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, province bordering Balochistan in Iran is called uh, Sistan by uh, Balochistan, right? Mm. Uh, similarly, there are people, uh, a huge number of Baloch in Oman, they are called al Baluchi, mm. right? Similarly, in Afghanistan, also there is an accretion. There isn't any Baloch uh, uh, cause there. Why is it that there has to be one here, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when you talk about uh, the idea of weaponizing grievances, grievances will always be there. If you go to Punjab's, any of Punjab's district, uh, and you ask people, the, they will find some ways to actually uh, come up with some kind of complaints regarding federation. This is what happens in underdeveloped countries. Mm. There always are uh, limited resources, and mm. the center and the provinces have to juggle those resources to ensure that they, everybody gets whatever they need. Mm. Uh, now, the, the whole idea is that at this moment, when you talk to the common men on the street in Balochistan, and believe me, by, by virtue of being an ethnic Baloch, I've uh, traveled there extensively more than once and uh, you know uh, there are two problems that I see on one side uh, is the common man uh, and their concerns are economic and day-to-day -day affairs and mm. by the way they also become collateral damage so-called collateral damage right 
uh, whenever such attacks are there. For example, in Quetta, if you are ex exploding bombs, do you think that there are certain smart bombs who are going to leave aside Baloch and uh, going to kill others? No, they, they all get killed, right? Mm. Uh, and then you have these irrational beings who have weaponized the so-called grievances and they keep on attacking not only uh, the, the authorities but also common men on the street. So they are uh, BLA, BLF, whatever, what kind of bluff there is. Hmm. All of these elements that are there, they are asking for confrontation. And that means that you will for once have to decide what you are going to do with them. Usually what happens, we start an operation and uh, province is a big one and whenever there is that, it takes some time to cover all the land, landmass, it is half of Pakistan. What happens is in the middle, uh, political governments either change or their intentions change. Mm. So it is essential for now to have a conversation in at least three, three places. One, National Security Committee. Uh, mm. Secondly, Apex Committee at the center and then in the province also. And that is what exactly do we need to do. There are at least two strands that you have to fight. One is Majid Brigade kind of terrorist activity. Mm. The other one is insurgency that is also there and that is also done by more or less the same people. Mm. Yesterday mm. when we were talking about Majid Brigade, Remember, Majid Brigade exists since 2010, um, uh, 2011, uh, when Aslam Achu actually founded it. But it is essentially BLS branch, hmm. and BLA is a, little, a slightly bigger organization. I mean, 150 people in Majid Brigade, 1,500 people in BLA. Now, this is the extent of it all. So, what do you need to do? <coughs> First thing you have to cut off any kind of financial support they might be getting. Why is that a question? Because, uh, um, uh, you know, we have porous borders, and then there's element of smuggling that goes on across Afghanistan, Pakistan border has been going on for quite some time, and mm. that might also be one of the reasons why you have all these issues. I mean, uh, you mm. don't need me to refresh your memory. There was Kharotabad uh, incident. Mm. There were umpteen others. There are people who smuggle, and that's how you also end up compromising your security. Mm. Find a way to actually end that. Hundi Havala, if there's any remnant of that, it should go. Mm. Now, let us talk about what you were saying earlier. Uh, uh, remember, China has condemned whatever happened categorically. Mm. Uh, so has America, so has Europe. So, so uh, we have heard from umpteen other places, including Iran. There's only one country which doesn't seem to want to condemn it. Mm. And that is called India. Yeah. <coughs> As was pointed out, their, their media uh, trolls, I would call them trolls because I don't think they, they qualify as any kind of national journalist. Mm -hmm. They just are being for blood. And they keep on enjoying the idea that any human being is suffering in Pakistan. Mm. But that kind of hate, I mean, is it very difficult to understand what is going on? It is essentially India, which is doing... Uh, all these things, and they must be investing also in Kachaka Daku. They must also be trying to invest in sectarian wars or fights. They must be investing in wherever there is any kind of possibility mm. or disagreement. So the, the first question is, if you are going to start an operation, please decide now and then don't stop. Till the time you have actually smoked out the last terrorist and the last insurgent. Because without that, all this talk of uh, reaching out to our strange brothers, mm -hmm. that is not going to work. I, when we talk about how it's affecting the region at large and how, um, Prof. Dafi also mentioned about the adverse impacts this is having for the entire region, now there's efforts for regional connectivity at the moment, how there's connectivity with the Central Asian states at the same time. 
and um, we see that these these incidents they disrupt those efforts for um, for uh, uh, trading and uh, those creation of those uh, new silk routes that we can talk about. Um, when we see these terror elements, how how do you see the region uh, taking uh, responsibility for it as a whole and all the regional stakeholders? They playing their part in curbing these actions by these terror elements. Rafi, it's a good question, and of course, if we uh, look at uh, Balochistan as an uh, uh, as a region, uh, uh, there there are uh, uh, problems right now uh, in terms that, of course, uh, there are uh, stakeholders, or I must say, the spoilers of the region who do not want uh, something which is going to benefit not only Pakistan and Balochistan, but of course. Uh, China and the uh, rest of the regional countries as well who believe in uh, getting benefits from uh, CPAC. Of course, CPAC is uh, pivotal not only for China, but of course, Pakistan and Balochistan's uh, prosperity as well. And uh, if, we to, uh, if we take the uh, example from the past, of course, Balochistan was quite crucial and quite important for uh, Soviet Union as well. And we remember that uh, during that time, even Soviets tried to disrupt the peace of Balochistan, uh, reason being that they wanted, uh, uh, you know, as it always been said, that they wanted a, an access to the warm waters of uh, uh, the uh, Arabian Sea. And uh, of course, we know that at that time, it has been uh, going on uh, from uh, the Soviet side uh, in within Balochistan, but that was contained. Of course, mm. Soviets, they were disintegrated. And when uh, of course, uh, China started uh, uh, with Pakistan the ambition of uh, CPEC, and we know that uh, the uh, the work related to uh, CPEC is at its full uh, swing, and very soon the fruits of CPEC would be mm. coming uh, uh, not only for uh, Balochistan, but of, of course uh, the whole Pakistan would be benefiting from mm. it. Suddenly, <coughs> I mean, uh, we know that uh, these situations they have been. Uh, uh, you know, getting complex and complex. And mind you, if we, uh, you know, <coughs> deeply dig into what kind of weapons uh, mm -hmm. th these terrorists are using, be them BLA, BLF, or uh, TTP, I mean, uh, all of them uh, 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 arms, they are the very arms that, was, that were left by the Americans in, uh, uh, in Afghanistan. How did they reach into hands of these uh, terrorists? I mean, that too is a huge question mark on it. When mm. it comes to regional connectivity, of course, Pakistan and China, they want CPEC to be connected to Central Asian republics through Afghanistan. So to benefit all of the Muslim Central Asian republics as well, who, whom they have uh, uh, sort of uh, cultural relations as well mm. with uh, Pakistan and uh, their cultural outreach is uh, you know, till Pakistan, they uh, align themselves in terms of uh, different cultures. And of course, we share the faith as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Muslim countries, all of them, they are. Uh, that too is going to, of course, uh, you know, uh, benefit the CPAC and uh, uh, that connectivity, the ambition of that connectivity is still there. But of course, uh, the spoilers, they don't want this to take place. And that is why we are seeing and we have seen in past as well that uh, spoilers like India, they have been uh, quite active uh, mm. in Afghanistan and in Iran as well, from Iranian mm. side and from uh, the uh, Afghanistan side. As Farooq has rightly pointed out, Sistan, Balochistan area is the area where we remember a few months ago, Sarawan, Sarawan was the city where seven different points where Pakistan's uh, uh, you know, armed forces hit them places because they were uh, hideouts of uh, the uh, uh, of the BLA uh, of course uh, runaways and uh, the one evidence uh, to it is that of course Iranian uh, uh, you know government they themselves mm. uh, endorsed it that whoever died in uh, in that uh, uh, you know uh, 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 surgical strike all of them they were the foreigners they were not uh, Iranian nationals and of course they were uh, all of these terrorists hiding out there. So we, I think, uh, need to conduct a few more IBOs and we have to, of course, raise this point in front of uh, uh, the uh, Iranian government as well. Uh, as these people are, of course, hiding out there, I'm not saying that with the consent of the government of Iran, mm. maybe Iranian government would be ignorant of that, but they need to be told that these people are, of course, uh, you know, finding a breathing ground at their uh, side. And mm. once 
they are getting uh, equipped and uh, getting uh, uh, you know uh, chan their chances of course they are penetrating in uh, pakistan side and of course uh, uh, they are uh, conducting uh, these uh, terrorist activities these are the mm -hmm. points that needs to be of course highlighted and of course uh, further down we have the example of kulbushan jadav how he uh, you know he had 17 visits uh, to iran mm. on his passport under the name of Mubarak Hussain Patel. Mm. We should never be forgetting. And he was someone who was, of course, sneaking into uh, Pakistan side. And he was, uh, of course, uh, uh, carrying out his activities of facilitations, of financing, mm. of, uh, of course, there were a few of the incidents in which uh, BLA and BLF people, they were, of course, taken to all the way to India for training purposes mm. as well. So all of these things, they need to be, uh, of course, looked into. There would be many who would be doing uh, the same uh, till now. And there are uh, international channels as well through which, of course, uh, all of these people, they are getting paid. And we shouldn't be forgetting that uh, uh, bitcoins and all of these, mm. uh, you know, alternate uh, modes of payments, yeah. nowadays, they are very extensively used to, of course, uh, uh, sort of uh, finance all mm. of these activities and I think uh, that needs to be looked into as well. A detailed report must be generated of uh, this very incident and that detailed mm. uh, report of course would carry all of these aspects mm. and the details of uh, uh, these aspects. Right, um, in light of uh, what Roger Fessel had to say, Brigadier Rukar, I'd like to ask you, um, when we see towards uh, what uh, the, the regional spoilers, uh, all fingers point towards uh, one uh, country and uh, when we talk about the regional spoilers, these are not just affecting Pakistan, but the entire region at large, Iran, China, all the Central Asian states, and how the efforts for economic prosperity of the entire region is at stake at the moment. Do you think um, concerted efforts, as uh, Pakistan also has evidence, there's been repeated incidents in the past as well, as Raja Faisal also mentioned, concerted efforts towards uh, tackling these uh, evil designs of one country uh, when they're using their proxies to destabilize the region. How do you think that should be counted in the regional context? Yeah, I think uh, specifically Pakistan has always tried to you know, shift to geoeconomics, uh, but uh, we are again brought into geopolitical arena uh, by the hostile powers. Uh, like uh, I think I'll agree with Raja Faisal and what Patafi Saab said, that uh, mainly its uh, target is Pakistan's prosperity, the prosperity of Bajistan, Integration of the region, uh, we already have CPAC 2 being launched, and then you have North South Corridor uh, offered by the Eurasian Brotherhood uh, headed by Russia. Uh, so, if you look at the uh, change which is coming up, uh, Eurasia is already geographically connected, and a lot of potential even for Afghanistan, for Iran. But somehow the uh, spoilers would definitely didn't, uh, don't want it. And then it's a convergence of interest. For instance, if you look at, uh, let's say, BLA or TTP. Uh, in case they are targeting uh, Chinese interests of CPEC or development of Lushan and KP, uh, there is definitely convergence of interest of some of the Western hostel agencies and India. And then, of course, you have uh, regional countries. Uh, there is a triangle between Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan where there is a lot of crossing of these people. It was very easy to uh, move around in these three countries. And that's where I think the strike also came uh, when Pakistan struck back. So, so these are, I think, the uh, reasons. Uh, if you look at the strength, as somebody mentioned, I think it is not more than uh, 1500 and 150 is the Carter of Majid Brigade, and rightly so, in case we are determined, uh, we can definitely clean it up. Uh, rest of, uh, if you look at Bridgestan, definitely the youth is there uh, for looking for jobs, uh, for a bright future. Uh, they're getting integrated into the mainstream. Uh, there's a proper government there, and uh, then we have international uh, airport of Gwadar coming up. Recordic is going to start producing in 2027. It's going to actually uh, bring a sea change in the uh, destiny of Bajistan and Pakistan. So there will be effort. Uh, and, uh, and I will go with Raja Faisal and say that Pakistan should also adopt strategy of uh, offensive defense. Uh, and now we have a lot of room, you know, in the Indian Northeast being created. And India is actually worried, uh, basically is almost scared that what's going to happen to them. Uh, and then we have definitely, uh, we have to support the freedom struggle in uh, occupied Kashmir. And uh, I think... Other than diplomacy, uh, other than, uh, you know, mayors uh, taken at government to government level, I think Pakistan should also look at uh, offensive defense. And uh, the time is now right. Uh, till the time you don't, I think, uh, hit India hard, uh, they'll keep on uh, doing it. So all told, I think uh, these are some of the 
uh, ideas that Pakistan uh, policy makers have to look into it. Uh, because India does it openly, you know, right? Moody Saab, you know, you remember calling from the rampart of Red Fort, I think, in one of the uh, Independence Day addresses and uh, talking of, uh, you know, uh, below people calling Mr. Moody or talking of Mukti Bani and his blood was mixed with that. So they do it very openly. I think Pakistan should maybe don't declare it, but they should look at those options as well. Right. Uh, in regards to that, I'll also move towards our second segment where um, when, when we talk about um, uh, terrorism and instability in the region, as there's a lot of efforts for Pakistan's economic revival, the foreign direct investment coming in, how the government is seeking an extended fund facility from the IMF, and these are a lot of efforts that the government is putting in, such as the SIFC, and creating an environment conducive for business and uh, where everyone can um, come and, it, and to streamline the process, the business and investor process in the country and to make it easier for all the investors that want to seek the opportunities and potential Pakistan has to offer. But at the same time, we see there are some elements that are, uh, that are up to uh, what no good that are cooking propaganda against Pakistan and its talks with the IMF. In regards to that, uh, Farooq Fadafi, I'd like to ask you, amidst the positive economic indicators that we're seeing, um, it's a breather for Pakistan's economy uh, at the moment and how there's foreign direct investment coming in, how there's talks with the IMF going on. But still, we see propaganda coming out from some quarters, uh, specifically on social media and uh, in this era of misinformation. How do you comment on that and how do you think the government can uh, tackle these elements that, of course, economy, it's, it's an issue of uh, national interest? Right. Thank you very much. I think uh, I'm going to address that, but with your permission, because mm -hmm. somehow you ended up skipping me in the yeah. previous, uh, the second round of the previous topic. I just wanted to actually point out uh, two things which are very important, mm -hmm. and that is uh, uh, hardening our borders, and that has to be done with all the countries. Uh, of course, China is an exception, but uh, remember that when we were talking about uh, uh, Pakistan's border. Uh, with um, Afghanistan that is usually called the Iran line but of course it is an international border. Uh, you, uh, we hear that we have been able to harden it and fences, uh, fence it uh, up to 98 percent. I wish that uh, it could be done up to 100 percent. That would be important because then you can stop terrorists uh, from moving around. Similarly, uh, uh, if it is called Deirdre Line, the border between Pakistan and Iran is called Goldsmith Line. And that, uh, uh, we also actually undertook some fencing of that border as well. I think it will help both Pakistan and Iran. If Pakistan and Iran both invest uh, further resources to fence that border as well, because without that, what you're going to have is uh, uh, smuggling, human trafficking, and eventually terrorists like Mubarak Hussain Patel and umpteen other similar kind of people who will uh, only harm both sides. So it is very important that we look at that as well. I don't know how do we generate resources. It is important that we do it. Now, uh, regarding economic activity, uh, of course, there is a very simple fact that uh, since Pakistan has been trying to go back to the fund and uh, uh, trying to actually stabilize its economy, uh, umpteen things have happened. And I want to actually, if we have time, I want to actually mm -hmm. have a deep dive, uh, dive into the matter. Remember when PTI was recently out of power and the federal government was trying to get the deal at that time, provincial governments, Hmm. Particularly with PTI's uh, government, their, their audios leaked, and you know what kind of emphasis was there, that somehow you have to fail the project, the idea that IMF uh, and Pakistan can work together. Hmm. Uh, there are many people who have been actually rooting against Pakistan since day one. But unfortunately, even PTI does not understand. When they keep on daydreaming, that uh, one day Donald Trump will win and somehow magically he will wish that uh, uh, you know PTI government comes back to power. Economically, if there is an external element involved in the failure of PTI government's uh, 
and the uh, previous uh, PDM government's economic activity, it is primarily Trump government's changes that they brought. For example, when PTI government was about to take over, uh, at that time what happened was that there were reports that IMF has this big juicy uh, package for Pakistan hmm. uh, to the tune of 16 <coughs> billion dollars. Hmm. And then all of a sudden what happens? Um, Indian people start escalating that concern. Mike Pompeo within 48 hours, uh, hmm. 24 hours comes on television and states on record that uh, Pakistan's uh, uh, IMF don't send American taxpayers money to, uh, to Pakistan through which it might end up with China. And then they retired their chief economist who mm -hmm. still had to stay in power for one more year. Mm -hmm. And they replaced <coughs> it with the, the current uh, gift that keeps giving, Gita Gopinath, mm -hmm. who is now um, uh, you know, the, the first uh, deputy uh, MD of the uh, fund. And through her, because she is thought to be essentially a plant of a Danny group, mm. they kept on actually designing the packages to such an impossible extent that Pakistan has been reeling. And that was only PTI. Now we have seen similar kind of activities going on with Pakistan as well. So things are already difficult. Mm. And at that time, if media, and I understand that the people, a reporter is supposed to report, and reporter will report the fact that perhaps the agenda still doesn't include Pakistan. Mm. But to actively suggest that Pakistan will not be able to achieve it, when Pakistan has essentially uh, has had a staff level agreement, is shameful. Hmm. When, whenever you use misinformation and disinformation to such a, an extent, things actually really go awry. And this is what is happening. Uh, remember that because, and by the way, I don't know, I, uh, I cannot audit whatever went on in Pakistan for past 20, 30 years. Hmm. But one uh, essential lesson that I've taken, never allow your best friend to go out, uh, go out with your, uh, you know, enemy. Mm. Otherwise, your enemy, even if they are assuring you that things are going to be hunky dory and you, you it is not at your cost, mm. they end up creating an environment in which you become the victim. And this is exactly what happened when India actually uh, mend their fences with America and then with the Arab countries also. Because of that, India keeps on using, if it is using warfare, mm. if it is using kinetic means, if it is investing in terrorism, do you think that they are leaving you aside when it comes to economics? Mm. No, of course not. So what is happening is what, uh, what is called the Red Queen effect. Mm. The, uh, of course, it is from Alice on the Wonderland, where the Red Queen actually tells no matter how much you run, if you want to maintain your current position, you have to keep running. Mm. And this is exactly what you are doing at this moment. In order to economically survive, Pakistan has to bend backward. Mm. At that time, all these people, and that actually brings to mind one example, mm. uh, Rafi. Uh, you know, in the Cold War era, there was a journal, a uh, Soviet journal, who actually uh, outed himself that he was actually working on behalf of uh, FBI and CIA. And then, of course, he went back and he was executed by the Soviets. Mm -hmm. But he was asked by the media, what exactly was your responsibility? And he said that only one, that always be in jobs commission or places where you can actually decide mm -hmm. uh, where people are going to be appointed and then to ensure that most competent people are not actually placed there. Remember, so in Pakistan, there seems to be this activity of self-sabotage, <coughs> which would mean that there are certain plants here, and they have been actually doing their job, and they are undercutting Pakistan's interest. So the question then is, who are those people? And if those people are there, why is it that system has actually become so obsequious 
that it it doesn't out them, it doesn't get to them, right? Mm. And this is exactly the shape of things of right now. We are so economically uh, in tight corner mm. because your enemy wants it. Mm. And then all of a sudden, the Pakistani stands up and starts repeating the same thing. What does mm. that mean? Mm, exactly, I get the point. Well, Faisal, I'd also like your comment. Considering there's uh, spoilers of peace in the region and then um, all the fingers point towards the same when we talk about propaganda and uh, propaganda against Pakistan's economic progress. In this era of misinformation, how do you think that can be countered and um, uh, can be curbed as well? Yeah, obviously, it can be curbed and countered uh, only through uh, the national unity and national, uh, uh, you know, uh, consensus. Mm. And uh, we have been, of course, shouting out loud since, uh, since almost more than two years now that Pakistan desperately needs uh, political stability uh, through, of course, uh, you know, political consensus and then economic consensus as well. There, at least there will, there should be uh, economic consensus when it comes to all of the political parties and I think all of the political parties, they need to sit down to get together mm -hmm. and all of the stakeholders as well, including the, uh, you know, uh, very important pivotal pillar of uh, journalism. Uh, before, of course, uh, you know, airing uh, any of uh, this kind of news, of course, uh, they have to recheck and make sure that it is something that uh, needs to be, uh, you know, rechecked and again and again it should be checked because it not only affects one single government, but if it affects uh, population at large. And uh, when we talk about this particular news, of course, the 7 billion bailout I mean, uh, still talks are going on, and of course, uh, the meetup uh, uh, in uh, uh, the coming month that will be there. But when it comes to, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, these spoilers, the uh, I, I must say, digital spoilers, as they say, di digital digital terrorists, digital uh, spoilers are out there as well, who are actually trying their best to, of course, uh, spoil. When it comes to, uh, you know, your uh, question about the uh, regional spoilers, of course, uh, you know. Uh, I think we headed towards uh, this uh, uh, segment very quickly, uh, but uh, uh, the previous segment, of course, uh, there were few things which were highlighted by uh, Brigadier, uh, 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 you know, Brigadier Saab and we had to, of course, address uh, whatever he said. Mm. But of course, we uh, moved on to uh, the next segment very quickly. Uh, he uh, particularly he highlighted one aspect and that was related to, to me it was very important and that was mm. related to of course uh, as we know that uh, our uh, Indian uh, uh, you know uh, as India calls itself our enemy of course India is quite busy uh, in Pakistan in terms of uh, you know uh, engaging Pakistan on the western front mm. then Tit for tat, of course, we should uh, go ahead as well and what, wherever and uh, whatever we could do to, of course, engage India in uh, India itself, then why not? We should do it. And, of course, there are, uh, you know, several uh, uh, locations where uh, India can be, of course, engaged so that India gets busy within itself and rather than, uh, you know, going abroad to do something uh, against uh, uh, other country, they can, uh, you know, stay at home and fix their own troubles. I'm talking about Manipur, Mizoram and all of these, you know, seven sisters and of mm. course then we come down towards uh, Naxals and uh, uh, we uh, come to Khalistan and then uh, there are several other 32 of uh, the states where uh, the troubles can be, uh, you know, created and can be, of course, uh, troubles are already there. We, mm. we just need to, of course, ignite them further and invest them further. Why not? We should do it. And of course, Kashmir is Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir is a place where people are sick and tired of uh, the most militarization uh, of uh, their region. And why mm. not? Of course, uh, Pakistan as a country has always been morally standing with people of uh, Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir for the sake of their freedom because they have been seeking freedom from India since the day one. Why not we should be standing them once, once more with them and morally uh, we should always be standing with them and uh, we should uh, you know help them out of uh, getting out of this situation. It's a, it's a humanitarian cause. Why shouldn't we do it? And yes, 
we must do that, we must engage India on uh, them fronts rather than waiting for uh, a sort of sanity coming from the Indian side and uh, waiting that they might end up, uh, you know, uh, uh, controlling themselves uh, from uh, or abstaining from, uh, you know, engaging Pakistan on the so Western Front. And of too course, long yeah, that already. And and uh, and I think uh, this is this is something we, of course, uh, need to, uh, 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 you know, look into. And when it comes to, of course, uh, uh, CPAC uh, and China itself, I think it should be China's priority as well. China is already sitting uh, on uh, the, on the Ladakh border, mm. and uh, they've got the Pangong Lake. They mm. they have the eastern Ladakh with them. Why not? China must push from that side, and of course, Pakistan push from this side, so mm. that India, that is turning out to be uh, an uncontrollable controllable beast, and the hegemonic designs India has for the region, I think they can be contained only through uh, the offense, and that offense should be quite measured so that India can be shown the real true face. And the balkanization, which uh, always gets uh, you know, discussed mm. of India, that I think uh, that is the time now that India uh, requires a balkanization, where yeah. it comes from and I how it comes from. I that you will conclude, so uh, I can add also. Yeah, please go ahead. Then I'll add as, add, add as well. No, but it was an <laughs> issue of economics. If you don't want to talk about economics, Okay, carry you on. can talk. I know, but I, I was I've hoping finished. that there. Oh, thank you. I've uh, because I don't understand this uh, impulsive habit to actually telegraph whatever can be done kinetically. Because I don't understand you uh, somehow. Indian side has so much power. They keep mm. on looking for uh, sound bites, and we keep on actually telegraphing to the world that we can. There are legitimate movements that are going on in India. Why should we, uh, uh, you know, lend our name to them? Mm. Uh, uh, from yesterday, uh, I, I keep on hearing that, oh, this is tit for tat for whatever is ha happening in Jammu. Why would I say, when Indian side, their legitimate, uh, you know, operators are not saying that uh, Pakistan has anything to do with whatever is happening in Jammu. Why are we framing ourselves and giving our enemy all this ammunition to further attack us? This mm. is the humble submission. Um, uh, I am sure that Raja Saab has never picked up a weapon and fought in a war, mm. nor have I. Mm. But we know where we can fight. At least do that bit first. Mm. Uh, there is social media. At least fight on that level. Uh, mm. uh, we can talk on media level as well, or economics also. Mm. At least start fighting there. Instead, mm. we are talking about everybody else's responsibility. They should be doing this or that. The way Pakistan has been actually cornered through propaganda, I don't want that propaganda to escalate further. Mm. What, what do you need right now? You need a situation where you can ensure mm. that the country can survive this kind of stupidity, this kind of attack by India. Uh, there is a clear indication that a Modi government is hurting India itself. Mm. The way they had to change the names or the list of their own candidates within, 20, uh, within four hours or whatever go was going on in Jammu and Kashmir, mm. that actually speaks volume to what, the, what is happening in Jammu and Kashmir. Even <coughs> Jammu's Hindus hate with them now. Mm. Why? Because nobody wanted Article 35A to go away. Mm. Because settlers come, they take away your resources. Mm. So mm -hmm. naturally, whatever is happening is organic. Mm. And this is because of the bad policies of India's side. Mm. <coughs> what you need to do in this country mm. is ensure that your borders are safe, that you have a good equation with your people. And then, since General Musharraf's time, we have been kind of actually being confused hmm. between authoritarianism and democracy. Pick a lane, hmm. whatever it is, and stick with it. And then ensure that all these elements who are undermining the country are smoked out. Right, definitely. Of course, uh, <coughs> Fahad Afi and Raja Faisal, thank you both for your valuable insights. And of course, we discussed the different aspects of 
how the, uh, the government stands on uh, terrorism and of course uh, the propaganda against Pakistan and the IMF talks and we talked about the different aspects of it and uh, the policies and uh, the way forward the government could adopt but that will conclude today's show. See you same time tomorrow. Till then, take care.